Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 23 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. We have been doing the methods of preparation of alkenes. In this video, I am going to tell you about the physical properties of alkenes. In physical properties, alkenes resemble alkanes a lot and we have already studied about alkanes and I would encourage you to watch those videos of this chapter where I did the physical properties of alkanes. If you compare the physical properties of alkanes and alkenes, we find that alkenes, most of the physical properties of alkenes are similar to those of alkanes, barring just two of them. So alkenes resemble alkanes in their physical properties, except for two situations. The first is in the types of isomerism. Alkenes show a different kind of isomerism while alkanes show a different kind of isomerism. Again, the isomers of alkanes and alkenes we have already done. If you remember, I told you that in the case of alkanes, uh, in the geometrical isomers, there was only a one bond between two carbon atoms and if the hydrogens were attached or the methyl group was attached to it, if the bond between two carbon atoms, one of the sides rotated it would rotate the entire bond. So the bond can freely move along 180 degrees without actually moving the atoms on the second side. One side moves, but, and along with it, the bond twists and one side can still stay static because the bond can move around 180 degrees. As a result of which, there were countless number of conformations which were possible in the case of alkanes. In alkenes, on the other hand, I explained to you that there is a double bond. If we twist one side, the bonds on one side, and they move, the bonds, they kind of stop each other. After a certain angle, you cannot force the bonds to twist further because these two, they act as a hindrance to the movement and therefore, Complete rotation, some rotation is possible, but complete rotation around the carbon-carbon double bond is not possible. As a result of which, we do not get conformations in the case of alkenes. We get uh, the geometrical isomers, which are known as the cis-trans isomers. Again, if you do not get what I am telling you, I would encourage you to watch all videos that we have covered in this chapter till now so that you, uh, it's in order, you know, we, it, with that understanding which acts as the basis of your understanding the topics as we move ahead. So, what is the difference in the isomerism of alkenes and alkanes? Alkanes have a single carbon, single, single, uh, carbon, carbon, single bond around which a free rotation uh, is possible of one side of the bonds. But in the case of alkenes, they do not have free rotation around the carbon-carbon double bond. Therefore, they show only cis-trans isomers. Either of the two will be possible. While in alkanes, the conformations were infinite number of conformations were possible. So this kind of conformation or conformation is only seen, uh, cis-trans isomerism is only seen in alkenes. The second property that is different, the physical property between alkenes and alkanes is in their polar nature. Do you remember, I told you when we were discussing the polar nature of uh, alkanes, that they are non-polar compounds. Organic compounds basically are non-polar compounds, most of them. And they are non-polar because both carbon and hydrogen have pretty comparable electronegativities. They are not, there is not a large electronegativity difference between them. Therefore, the carbon-hydrogen bonds, even those are not very uh, polar. And on the whole, the compound is also not polar because it has a very symmetrical structure and the structure and the polarities are pretty balanced. In the case of alkenes, on the other hand, if you remember when we studied the cis-trans isomerism, I told you that the cis isomers, in the cis isomers, the bulkier groups can fall on one side or the alkyl groups can fall on one side and they are electron repelling. So they tend to create a net dipole moment. 
in the trans isomer where the methyl groups may be attached along the double bond if one is on one side and the other is on the other side they affect the dipole moments that are created by both of them they are cancelled out because they are in the opposite directions but in the cis isomer the dipole moments are in the same direction and they kind of make the molecule slightly polar or they do create a dipole moment but the dipole moment is minuscule it is not really so large that you can call the compound a polar compound a little mild polarity is created but even with that mild polarity the compound is predominantly non-polar so what what is the property that depends on the polarity the solubility of the substance a uh, polar solute will dissolve in a polar solvent and a non-polar solute will dissolve in a non-polar solvent. So we had talked in the case of alkanes that they do not dissolve in water because water is a polar solvent. But they do dissolve in, they do dissolve in non-polar solvents. The same goes for alkenes also, all, although the cis isomer may have uh, a small amount of polarity due to the net dipole moment, yet since they are basically non-polar they will also not dissolve in water and they will dissolve in an organic solvent so they differ in their polar nature so there are only two places where alkanes and alkenes differ in their physical properties in the isomerism the types of isomerism they display and the second is in their polar nature alkanes we know are non-polar why due to very little difference in the electronegativities of carbon and hydrogen so there is no polarity created in the molecule on the other hand, cis isomer of alkenes, they do have a net dipole moment and they do have a net dipole moment yet, looking at this, you may think that this, then this should dissolve in water. Yet, they do not dissolve in water because the dipole moment is minuscule. It is not large enough to cause them to dissolve in, in a, to make them enough polar to dissolve in water. Now coming to the other uh, physical properties which are very similar to those of alkanes. The first three members that is, you know, the first in the case of alkanes, the first four members are gases. Which are those? Methane, ethane, propane and butane. In the case of alkenes, methane is actually very unstable and almost non-existent. So the first three members that is ethane, propane and butene are gases from five to 17 that is the next 14 alkenes they are liquids and 18 onwards they are solids so that is very similar to uh, alkanes then ethene is a colorless gas and it is it has got a sweet smell alkanes are colorless odorless alkenes are also colorless and odorless except for one ethene which is colorless but it has got a sweet smell only ethene has a smell all others do not have a smell so all other alkenes are colorless and they are odorless they are insoluble in water naturally because they are basically non-polar even if they have a very mild dipole moment in the case of cis isomers yet they are non-polar in nature so they do not they are not soluble in water which is a polar solvent but they are soluble in non-polar solvents. For example, they are solu soluble in benzene. They are soluble in petroleum, ether, which are non-polar solvents. Then, you know, as we go down a homologous series, every member differs from the previous one by a CH2. That is, every next member has one carbon and two hydrogens more than the previous member. So as we come down, the size of the molecule will go on increasing because one CH2 is going on adding. As the size increases, the mass increases. As the mass increases, the boiling point and melting points will also increase. So we say they show a regular increase in the boiling point as the size increases with increasing size. They show regular increase in boiling point with increasing size. And with every new member, that is in the homologous series, every next member is about 20 to 30 Kelvin. Uh, the boiling, its boiling point is about 20 to 30 Kelvin more than the previous one. Which is easy to understand because every new member has one CH2 more. 
that is it has one carbon and two hydrogens more than the previous one so the presence of that one carbon and two hydrogens contributes to making the uh, boiling point 20 to 30 kelvin higher than the previous member another thing we noticed in the case of alkanes if you remember this is pentane this is 2 methyl butane and this is 2 2 dimethyl propane these are all isomers of pentane they have the same molecular formula and if you look at the structure this is most spread out this is more compact because it is as the branching increases the molecule starts turning spherical and you know the surface area of a sphere is smaller and the surface area of a long chain is larger so as the structure becomes more and more compact it affects the boiling point so we say alkanes straight chain chain alkanes just like alkanes straight chain chain alkanes have higher boiling point and the more branched alkanes will have lower boiling point why because they'll become more spherical their surface area will decrease and therefore they will have a lower boiling point they become more compact just like that just like alkanes we see this property in alkanes we see this in alkenes also the more branched an alkene is the lower is its boiling point why because the structure with more branching the structure becomes more and more spherical here we are talking of the physical property so the presence of the double bond does not contribute much to the uh, melting points and boiling points so we say like alkanes, straight chain alkenes have higher boiling point than the isomeric branch chain compounds. The branched one, the, I mean the straight chain alkene will have higher boiling point than the branch chain alkene, just as we had it in the case of alkanes. So these were the physical properties of alkenes. With this, I'll wind up today's video. If you uh, wish to watch other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears here. Uh, on top of your video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.